all right guys welcome back to the channel really quick i want to go over all the settings i have set up in the uh intune radio system and the gauge module now i perform obviously form over function as far as how things are set up and read back more information displayed the better so here's my thought process and what i have set up and I would like to hear in the comments what you guys use and what maybe will work better. This is the way I have my gauge module set up. So I, I like having a compass availability on the upper left right there. And then in the middle, which these are all customizable if you don't know this, but in the middle top right there, the range, I like knowing how much range I have left, especially when you're out on the trail and you need to know, hey, I only got, you know, 100 miles we gotta go find some gas. And obviously temperature is a very important thing. Just realize that this temperature right here is also right there, so we can change that because there's no point in having it there and there. So we're gonna change that to something else. I also leave it on the, t the gauges module, screen two right there. We can cycle left and right to all the vehicle information. You can cycle through all your gauges added on. So I like having it on this because you can monitor all your vehicle information. And I like having it on the tires because you can see your exact tire pressure. And if one's starting to drop, you know, if you get a nail or a puncture in the sidewall, that's very important when off-roading because slow leak will, especially when your tires are deflated, will very quickly cause damage. So you wanna keep it, your eyes on that. And then on the bottom there, it shows the mileage, but I also have turned on what gear it's in. So there's an option in there. So I'm putting it in drive right now, but see the one, so you're in drive, but in first gear. So obviously as the transmission shifts up and down, you, you, you know what gear you're in, which is, you know, more information that, you know, helps you understand your car better. Also right over here, Headlights I leave on auto. I always have the fog lights on. I always have the bed lights on. So this right here is dome light brightness, right? And this right here is gauge module brightness. Now, if this is turned all the way up, it turns on the dome lights. So that's convenient when you need to turn your dome lights on real quick, but it's also a pain in the butt if you, auto, if you hit it with your knee or the kids play with it and you can't figure out why the dome lights aren't turning off. So, and it doesn't really have a, like a, it clicks into position, but it's not like a hard click. So on, and then you put it down one, and that's where I leave it all the time. I have it set up where the seat heater and the um, steering wheel heater turn on if the temperature um, deems it cold. So it's 30 degrees outside right now. So it turns it on. By default, I always leave it on audio so I'm, I can see what audio select my channels and whatnot at the bottom down here this is what i have set up i have the now you can move these tiles and everything so all the apps so the middle that app that button never changes but all the other buttons are programmable like an like an ipad you just hold it down and then you can move it around and lock it on the home screen so i have navigation down here i have my media which i normally default on uh, my phone the default and then I have off-road pages and then the forward camera which is cool you can clean the camera and then the lines follow the steering wheel if I move the steering wheel the lines follow uh, this was an option when I built the car to get the forward facing camera I can also click on the back camera you know and those also move left and right as you park one thing on the climate that I would change if you guys haven't done it already is lock in the sync button. So when you actually, you know, use this to adjust climate control, it automatically does the passenger side. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the drastic temperature differences back and forth. Or if you normally drive in your car by yourself, that's just a cool feature to keep that sync locked up. There's no sync button on here. I wish there was like maybe right here instead of the uh, screen off button because I don't know. If I want the screen off, I just hit the power button. Up here, I don't know how much that's gonna focus. But you have uh, call assist and SOS, which you still have to have cell phone service. The vehicle has its own cell 
uh, line. So anyway, so let's go through the options of the radio first. So with the radio, obviously for more of a function, right? So you click on apps and we're gonna click on settings. Uh, where are you here? So going through here, this is the way I have mine set up. Display mode, auto, set theme. I have, I believe it's one of the last ones, Jeep 18, which sets the the color display and the font and all that. And uh, touch screen beep I have on. Um, yeah, so pretty much all that is what I have up for the first menu. Units, obviously US, voice, detailed, right? And then clock, I have sync time with GPS, show it in the status bar, and then camera. This is what I have set up. I like the active camera guidelines. And then let's go down to uh, safety and driving assistance, hill start assist, nice feature to have. Uh, mirrors and wipers, headlights on with wipers. So uh, that's pretty much a given. Lighting, I do a 30 second delay on approach when you take the key out. Headlights with wipers, daytime running lights on, flash lot, lights with lock, yes. So going to doors and locks, this is what I changed a little bit. So I have all that on and then sound horn with lock, so on the second press only, yes. Sound horn with remote start. I took that off because I don't like when I start in the morning it honks the horn. I mean, that's kind of weird. Auto unlock and exit, yes. Flashlights with lock, yes. Uh, we pretty much went through all that. So first press of the key fob unlocks all doors. It's default on the driver's door. And with kids, you just want to unlock it and you know be able to open the back doors right away. So. I left that on. Auto on heated seats and steering wheel. So all starts, right? You can just do remote start to warm up the car and it automatically turns on the seat heaters if the temperature, I think it's below 40, but it works great. I mean, at first I'm like, does it default to that all the time? Like even when it's hot outside and they're like, no, it, it, it'll blow cold air, blow hot air, depending on the outside temperature. So it's very important uh, for that. So let's go to auxiliary switches. And so the auxiliary switches down here, you can actually program what they do. So either latching or mon monetary, right? The power source, it's either gonna be the ignition or hot at all times battery. And you can recall the last state of it anyway, but the pigtails for those are down here and under the hood. So when you wire in lights, we'll go over this later when we wire up some uh, some external lighting and that is pretty much it for the settings right so i did change the key off power delay to off so when you turn off the car everything turns off instead of having a 30 seconds delay of you know the radio still being on audio i didn't really mess with that phone bluetooth paired it all phone pops up displayed in cluster xm reset system so that's Pretty much in a nutshell, my settings I have set up. Uh, you could move around some of this stuff, but uh, this is how I have it. I don't normally default on that. Let's see, going into the cluster here, uh, you move it around with this, but, so compass, we already have that. Outside temp, right, time, that's already on there. Range to empty, average economy, current economy, I think I'm gonna go with trip A distance because I was interested in that before and um, I would like, on the Tundra, I would always like to know what my trip A was because I would use trip A in between gas fill-ups and I would use trip B in between oil changes. That way I know how long I've been in an oil change and how long I've had gas in the car. So I kind of would get used to the, you know, the range of the mileage on uh, what I have compared to what the system thinks it has. So uh, I think we're just going to go with that. So we're going to go down to trip A distance. Setting saved. And now we're going to go down. So you can change your current gear, right? So I have that on, I have the odometer on, favorite menus. So if you go into favorite menus, this is what I have. You can shut off certain things because I don't really care about the audio in the middle. I don't care about my messages. 
yeah off-road don't you know i use so what's cool is when you put this into four-wheel drive and click off-road plus the off-road page just automatically loads up and shows all your gauges and whatnot so that's really cool with that stop start it tells you what stops that i'm not a fan of the stop start some people love it some people hate it i'm just not a fan of the truck shutting off i mean it's just extra wear and tear in the starter just to get you know a couple you know a mile per gallon better or something but that's pretty much it i'm getting used to this the cruise control is one thing getting used to the wipers the wipers are a little bit different than uh toyota uh, other than that it's been great I, I i love that i gotta do a video on how to program that so and how to program the uh the garage door to that we'll do that here in a little bit but that's it for right now guys um Thanks for watching. Just for reference, the rear cargo uh, outlet, which I will be using to run my fridge. If you turn the key on, so the car would be in the running position, it remembers the setting. So every time you start the car, you don't have to press it. So the outlet is on only when the car ignition is on. Um, but it saves the memory. So if I turn it off and turn the car off and then restart the car, it will stay off. But if I turn it on, restart the car, so car is off. Turn it back on. There. Now it's back on. So that's, that's a good feature to have. So you're not hitting the button every time you shut the car off and on. We also installed the seat protector for the kids, uh, my daughter's car seat. Uh, she likes to make a mess, so the red stitching matches that. So that is very nice. My son's got a booster seat. I should probably get one for him too. First time. So 334. Still cheaper than premium, I guess. It's normally around the size of mid grade. So, here goes the diesel. First time ever putting diesel in anything. Cap is a good giveaway. Ultra low sulfur diesel. Mm -hmm. My first time. See how much she does. Well, that was the first fill up. I was on one eighth of a tank left. And um, at uh, 3.38. This year, you can give yourself an extra layer of 